Yes, welcome back to Dylan Friends. This iteration? Yeah, iteration is uh, called Teach Me Please. If you've been enjoying the series, make sure you go check out a few other episodes. We've had Teach Me Please about wine, Teach Me Please how to buy my first house. And today I'm very excited uh, to sit down with Ruben Williams to chat about how to make the most of your early career and, and even just how to make the most of your career in general. Um, so yeah, welcome back to Teach Me Please. This episode of Teach Me Please is brought to you by our beautiful friends at Deakin University, home to the world's number one sports science school. And let's get into it. Ruben, how are you, man? Dill, I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Mate, it's, uh, it's an honour, pleasure, privilege to have you on the show. I must admit, I feel like I know you in some <laughs> aspect because the world's are small in our circles. You're mm. a, obviously a young entrepreneur and um, you've got your own podcast as well and your own business that's thriving. And I, you know, we have each other on LinkedIn and... Um, you're very active on that, but you provide great content for a lot of young people out there that are looking to get into the industry. Thank you. We, we try to spam without, you know, spamming too much, but yeah, we're prolific there. <laughs> no, it's a good, it's it's a great platform because I don't, I don't even know if this is true, but I heard ages ago that LinkedIn has like the best, it's actually got like a wider algorithm than TikTok. Mm. Is that true? Well, I, the stat I do know about LinkedIn is that... Of all the people who've got profiles, only 1% of people actually post content. Yeah. So if you're trying to cut through on a platform, it's like the easiest platform to cut through on because, you know, everyone's posting on TikTok, everyone's all over Instagram, but people are kind of too scared to post on LinkedIn. So yeah. there's a lot of free air out there. That's really interesting. Mm. Well, geez, that's a good tip off the start. We've already yeah. got one little point um, <laughs> off there, but I think one thing we'll talk about today that we were just chatting about off air in this uh, sort of series reflecting on our own careers and it talks about adding value which is mm. one thing that I really want to chat about today because I think it's an aspect that people can really go forward with in their career speaking of LinkedIn though I'm more of the uh, the operator there's some great content on LinkedIn but then there's also those ones that you stumble across and they're like you know saw this dog this morning I gave him a bowl of water he looked th- like hot and thirsty and then I went to my new job interview and the boss of that company was the dog that I gave the water to. And it's like, be nice to everyone. You never yep. know who's your boss. Yeah. So there's a, there's a lot of cringy <laughs> stuff on there. There's some weird shit on yeah. there. Well, like, so the, um, you're going to think I'm weird because yeah. I count all the stats of my content. But the, uh, the best performing post I've ever put out was a meme. Yeah. And so it was actually this time last year. I was with your mate, Scotty Walton, mm. in Qatar for the FIFA World Cup. And uh, we got a bit excited at, at the Socceroos match against Denmark and made a couple of signs. And I made a sign that said, uh, give us a public holiday. And um, put that up in the air after we just qualified for the round of 16. It then gets picked up on the BBC Twitter account. They post it. And um, so now this photo of me on TV has gone viral on Twitter. So I took a screenshot of that and then uh, put it on LinkedIn and just tagged Anthony Albanese. And it got like a thousand likes on LinkedIn. I was like, I need to stop like trying too hard with my content and just focus on memes. Oh man, dumb shit <laughs> just goes like the best. It's so annoying. And I, I suppose you, you, know, you hear this all the time. You put so much effort into stuff, mm. but then it's the organic stuff that, that resonates with people. So um, yeah, I'm not surprised by that, but I would, I would love a few more holidays. But, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I'm ready for one. Um, mate, tell us a bit about yourself, what you do, who you are, and how you got to sort of where you are with, with sports grad. Yeah, sure thing. So, um, co-founder of Sports Grad, we are a podcast and a community to help people get jobs in sport. Uh, and the reason why we got into this was because uh, me and my co-founder Ryan, we met working at Cricket Australia, and for us, that was kind of like a dream drop, uh, dream come true. We're um, both working in the partnerships teams, both working, um, you know, across things like the Boxing Day Test match, and uh, having the times of our lives there, and. Um, and then sports grad became an outlet to kind of help other people live their own dream in the sports industry. So going way back, the way that sports grad first started was um, um, I arrived at Deakin University uh, having dropped out of a marketing degree and thought, I just want to work in sport. Like I've tried one degree, dropped out of marketing, and um, I just want to follow my career, uh, you know, follow my passion for sport. Mm. And um, when I arrived, I had no idea about the sports industry. No, I had no idea about like what jobs you could do in sport. So I started going out there and asking people in the sports industry, like, what do you do and, and how did you get into it? But then when I arrived back at university, I'd like talk to my mates and, um, and uh, they weren't doing the same thing, but I'd share with them some of the points I'd learned and they'd say, oh, that's really interesting. That might help my career direction a bit. So um, I thought, what if I can record the conversations I'm having and put them online so that other people who want to work in sport can find out more about the industry? And so that was the start of uh, Sportsgrad, the uh, the YouTube channel. And um, 
that uh, taught me a lot, introduced me to a lot of great people in the sports industry. And, um, and then uh, that helped me get my first job at Cricket Australia. So I, um, I had a very kind of ideal transition from university into, into work. Um, on the Monday of my, after my last exam, I started work at Cricket Australia. And so kind of just went from one thing to the next. And so in the background of um, my job at Cricket Australia, um, this YouTube channel is kind of ticking along, but, you know, losing a lot of attention. And um, so from 2017 to 2020, I had a great time at Cricket. Um, we had the Ashes series, which we won in 2017. The ball tampering, tampering incident, interestingly, happened during that time. And then the... Uh, fantastic. Were you a part of that? Well, I, I wasn't a part of it, <laughs> but I had to sit at a desk which had this pillar in front of me, which had like this wrapping of the Australian cricket team and run right in front of that wrapping was, um, you know, Steve Smith and David Warner's faces. And I was like, um, I'm responding to emails that I really shouldn't be doing today because of what's happened over in South Africa. So that was a fun little period. Um, but then, um, then uh, COVID hit in 2020 and uh, Cricket Australia announced that 80% of staff have been stood down. Mm. And uh, so I had this like 10 week period off work where I was like, what, what do I do? People are going to do, you know, random cash laboring jobs to try and make up for lost income. And I was kind of sitting there thinking like, you know, how am I going to spend this time that I've got to myself? And the, uh, the thing that kept playing on my mind was, um, was sports grad. It was this neglected channel. I thought it had potential. People were saying, you know, it's, it's a great idea. You should keep going. Um, and this opportunity presented itself that I thought, I'm never going to get this much free time to dedicate myself to launching something in my life again. And, um, and so I kind of went all out and, um, I just read the, uh, the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss, which is all about, you know, creating a lifestyle, um, or creating a business that allows you to live a lifestyle that you want traveling and working wherever you want. So, um, nine days after finishing that, I kind of rearranged a few things and, uh, got someone to move into my room so I could start renting a place in lawn and, um, moved down to the beach for, for eight weeks and started this uh, research and development phase of what sports grad could become. So for the first half of that, I was on the phone every single day to students asking like, what, what's the biggest challenge with getting a job in sport? And I'd write down, stick it on the wall. And, um, and then, I, then I called up Ryan and uh, I said to Ryan, hey, I'm sick of doing this YouTube thing by myself. Do you want to come and join me and do it as a podcast together? And he's like, ah. Oh, yeah, right. Let's let's give it a go. And I kind of said to him like, you know, we'll do, we'll do it for three months, and if you know if it sucks, then uh, we can go back to do whatever we're doing. And um, so we're getting pr- prepared to uh, launch this podcast. At the same time, Cricket Australia is in the news again because um, words got out there. There's going to have to be staffing cuts. And um, and a week before we were due to release our first episode about how to get a job in sport, I got a call from my uh, general manager Steph. And she says, Ruben, unfortunately, we can't hold on to everyone. Your job has been made redundant. I was like, oh, Steph, this is a really bad time because I'm about to start a podcast about getting jobs in sport, not losing jobs <laughs> in sport. So can you like make someone else redundant, please? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so if you were following me on LinkedIn at that point in time, one week you would have seen me saying, hey, who's got an opportunity? The next week, hey, I know this is ironic, but here's a podcast about getting jobs in sport. And um, I think everyone just kind of felt sorry for this guy who lost his job. So... <laughs> So they decided to tune in and um, three days later, we became the number one careers podcast on iTunes, which like in the middle of COVID, you can't just in a room by yourself, like patting yourself on the back, like what the hell's going on here? (laughs) Um, And so I was out of a job, but had this idea that had been validated. And so, so after that, I thought, well, I'm loving this. How can I turn it into my job? Um... And Ryan, fortunately, kept his job at Cricket Australia. So we were podcasting on kind of different schedules for the first little while. And um, and then I like came across this little bit of content one day that was talking about, you know, 10 ways to make money as a, as a content creator. And uh, subscription revenue memberships was one of the ideas. And I thought, well, what if we put into a sports grad membership for, for listeners, you know, somewhere we can go and get extra learning opportunities, have Q&As with industry professionals, you know, get master classes from people who are doing it in sport, um, networking opportunities so you can actually meet people. And um, and uh, that product's been going for, for three years now. We've now got over 700 members. We've created a duplicate community for working professionals who want to continue to grow after they've got a job. And mm-hmm. that community has helped um, over 500 people land jobs in the sports industry and, and uh enabled Ryan to step out of Cricket Australia and come and join me and 
yeah, now we're just running this venture together. Unbelievable, mate. It's an awesome story. Um, mm. So fascinating. I think today, like, for anyone out there listening, obviously in the sports industry is what we're talking about, but holistically, you know, put this to your career as well and whatever field you're in, because it's all transferable in any career that you want to go down because the lessons, I suppose, that you help people learn through sports grad are mm. transferable to any industry totally. that, are, that are there. So. Um, unbelievable what you've been able to do with sports guy. Congratulations Thank on, on that with, <laughs> with how many people you guys have helped um, is is really incredible. I suppose through that, what mm. do you think like has been some of the biggest learnings for people to to get? You know, like I, for example, was really interested in having this chat today because it's something that I've always been quite passionate about too and, and being proactive in this space of, you know, the word networking is is is, is a great word, but it's also... Maybe makes has, it cringe. Yeah, it, it makes yeah. it cringe a little <laughs> yeah. bit because it's like it it has that sort of connotation to it where like you, you're trying to get something out yeah. of someone, and I suppose it's rightly wrongly in a way like you know evidently that is what mm. you are trying to do, but there's other ways you can do that first, where there's building relationships, just being proactive, talking to people, and I suppose today what I'm really keen to talk about is like you know how you did that, and I'll mm. share some experience of how I've done that because there is skills. Mm. Um, I've fucked it up more than I've got it right. <laughs> But I think today we'll give people hopefully some really good um, ideas and ways to go forward in their career, mm. uh, whichever way they're, they're sort of trying to go. Yeah, absolutely. What? Uh, where do you start? What's been sort of the big things for you? Yeah, so I, I guess like the first thing is probably changing mindset around networking because I was exactly yeah. of the same thought process that you just described. Like in uni, none of my friends were doing it. Particularly other industries seem to have a more direct pathway into jobs. So wasn't as required as for the sports industry. And so when I would like, you know, tell my friends, hey, I'm, you know, I'm not getting any responses on LinkedIn. They're like, why, why are you doing that? Like, you know, why are you trying to you know, hustle with your career? Like, that's not cool, man. I'm like, yeah. oh, God. <laughs> so, um, like, we're trying to, like, change that perception because, like, in sport in particular, it is required. And, you know, if people are encouraging each other to do that, then it just makes it so much easier for someone to get started. So, I think the first thing to understand is that at the end of the day, it's just people helping people. Mm. And if you're coming at it from that point of view, then it makes it a much nicer sort of concept to, to understand. Um, and so... I think once you once you get to that point, then you can start to think about well, where do I go with it? Who do I need to talk to? What what's my goal with it? But I think the number one thing once you get into a situation with someone else is trying to understand well what do they want and how can I help them because that's when you ultimately get a lot more in return. Two way relationships mm. is, is sort of yeah it's it's a great point and we sort of as I said we're speaking about this chewing the fat off air around. Um, you know, as I said, there's those words like networking, mentorship, but all really this is 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 building relationships, building mm. connections, and also being proactive with it, not reactive. And mm. I suppose for me in this is situation as well, I was probably in the, a different space where when I was sort of coming through, I didn't go to university. Well, I did actually go to university. It didn't didn't last very long. But mine was sort of around, I didn't know what I wanted to do. So mm. I think there's like obviously the people in life that might know they want to get into business or sport or you know real estate whatever they are we have a clear pathway even to go back further um before those making those connections i think one thing that i'd say to sort of people that want to go into things and i think maybe you were alluding to this before when you're talking about the marketing degree but it's like how many times have people gone you've heard the story of people going into a uni degree thinking they want to go into a certain mm. field then actually doing it and going Fucking hell, this is not what I want to do this at sucks. all. Yeah, get me yeah, out of here. This sucks. <laughs> and I was really lucky when I played footy that I thought post footy, you know, like most footballers, I was like, I'm going to go into property development. And I had some awesome connections, <laughs> reached out, just said, can I shadow you? Did it for a while. And I was like, this is not me, man. This mm. is like not me at all. Teaching, went to university, tried it. I was like, no, nah, this is not teacher? me. going to be a teacher? I was going to be a teacher. Wow. Yeah, I did two, tried to do two courses of teaching. I did about two subjects for about five <laughs> years. I just didn't know how to submit the work in. Yeah. Like, no one told me how it worked. I couldn't find the button. Well, no, but I didn't even understand how to log into my portal. <laughs> right, so, like, okay. it just, I think, like, the technology just wasn't... I never got explained anything. Yeah, okay. Which is interesting <laughs> about uni in itself. Like, you have to do everything yourself. Yeah. Whereas I'd come from a world where, you know, people were wiping your ass for you, and mm. it, it was um, it was quite hard to sort of get that aspect. So, I think just first, and before you even get into the career stuff, it's like mm. working out and trialing different things to work out what you actually want to do before you commit to going mm. into a certain field. Totally. And I think that's one of the great benefits of networking is that it does give you so much data about the world and allows you to 
siphon that to decide what direction am I going to take. And ultimately, that's kind of why we created the podcast because, you know, if you want to go and get 100 different perspectives of the sports industry, try reaching out to 100 people and, you know, take you the entire year plus. But, you know, if you've got Reese's or outside that out there that can help you fast track that, then... um. You can learn a lot more and make those decisions a lot quicker. Well, that's the thing even with what you're saying exactly with podcasting too, the amount of resources now that you can actually mm. find out exactly what people do in certain jobs and then what is, um, you know, if it suits your skill set or the lifestyle that you want to live, mm. which is um, which is really cool. So say, for example, um, someone's looking to get into a certain field, how would you approach that? Like, what, what would you do? Um, you know, like even going back to like a LinkedIn, like would you, mm. you, how important do you think that's been for you to set up your page properly? Oh, massively, massively. Um, so, um, so there's probably a few parts of that in terms of like how to get into a certain industry. So yeah. say they're coming out of university, like what, what do you do first? Yep. Or, yeah. Yeah. So, Well, uh, even so, like just like completely spitballing, like should you have a LinkedIn while you're at university? Mm. Like what, what's your opinions on that? Yeah, yeah. So LinkedIn is kind of like the gateway for people to contact you who, yeah. you know, you might not be able to find on Instagram, for example. Yeah. Um, I had a... Um, I had an old boss who I was casually scooping ice cream for who he was an entrepreneur, had run five or six different businesses. And he said to me, Ruben, get on LinkedIn early because that's where all the smart people are, as in like the decision makers. So if you can get on there and make yourself known to the people who are going to hire you, then, you know, your surface area for luck of being hired, you know, increases. For sure. So um, in the early days when I was uh, in university, my strategy for for linkedin was to have my profile set up properly and display everything i'm doing but then also just pop up every now and again with things that i was up to and uh, i think one of the pressures that people face when they're getting started on linkedin is this thought that you know you have to be super insightful you've got to have something really clever to say whereas if you just share the stuff that you are doing and the events that you're going to that says a lot about you as well so if i went to a conference as a student i'd simply sit up the back stick my phone in the air, take a photo, and then post on LinkedIn and say, hey, great to hear from such and such. I learned these three points. And that's not smart. It's not insightful. It's just like kind of reporting what yeah. I'm up to. But people would look at that and think, oh, Ruben's getting out there and you know being proactive with his career. And that kind of creates a, um, a perception in people's minds. So there's very simple things you can do to stay top of mind on LinkedIn very early on. It's a great point. Like I, I'm not a big poster on LinkedIn, but if I ever find something that I like, I just repost it. Mm. It's like... I don't really have many uh, insightful things to say uh, through a digital platform like that, but mm. I love LinkedIn. I think it's a really cool app. I find so many cool articles and stuff, especially mm. in this sort of digital media industry, because it, it just tracks the things that you like, the people you follow, the conversations you have, mm. which is really cool. Um, so that networking side of things around, um, you know, say for example, we're at uni, we've we've uh, you know we're one to two years in, or, or even sort of finished, and you have an idea of where you want to go. We spoke before about like building that sort of army around you and like being able to make connections, um, whether you know them firsthand or you find them through LinkedIn. How would you like approach someone to like catch up for um, a coffee or, or chat with them? Like what, what would you first do? Mm. Yeah, so if, if I wanted to say get a mentor who you know could help me over the next couple of years, um, I'd probably start with a very wide approach because if you try and go for one person, they say, no, you're going to be very disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> um, and often, you know, the people who you think want to mentor you, you may not click with at first. It could be someone way left of field that you click with and they surprise you. So you want to be open to that as well. Mm. So I would, I would really cast your net wide and I would, um, I would send out, um, you know, say 20 or 30 messages to people to say, hey, I'm studying sport management. I'm looking to get a job in sport. I'm really interested in these three things, but um, I'm trying to narrow it down. Um, I can see that you're working in that area. Is there any chance you've got an op- you know, 20 or 30 minutes at the end of next week to, to catch up? And so I think if you can give people a reason to catch up with you or a reason to help you, then they're more likely to say yes. Mm. And when you're trying to like get through that first stage, it's just about making it as easy as possible for people to say yes. So the other thing I mentioned there was catch them at the end of next week and make, you know, position as, as, you know, only 20 or 30 minutes. If they can do a coffee after that, but, you know, if if a 20 or 30 minute Zoom call is more achievable for them, then, then go for that, you know, or, you know, Tell them you'll meet them at the cafe next to their work. Just make it as easy as possible for them to pop out in between what they're doing. Um, from my experience in the sports industry, 
people are super kind <laughs> people are super super generous and i think sport is one of those industries where you do need a bit of help to get in and everyone's had a bit of help so a lot of people are really willing to to pay it forward so i think if you are you know holding yourself back from sending out a message just you know have faith that the sports industry in particular and more broadly there's a lot of brilliant industries out there mm. with brilliant people who are willing to help you so first thing i would do is cast your net wide get those first meetings in and then once you say you know 10 of them come back from your net of 30 they're going to give you adv- advice based on whatever problem you are uh, encountering go away and put that advice into action and then report back to them and say hey thank you so much for helping me and give me these three points. I've gone and done that. Here's now the results. And now they're invested in you. And if they come back again and you ask for help again, then like I've, you do that two or three times, they're now your mentor yeah. without even like having to ask, can you be my mentor? It just kind of happens naturally. So there's a couple of people in my life who are, I'll go to regularly who are just happy to catch up about different things. But we've never had the official like yeah. ask you know will you be my mentor yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't need yeah. to put titles on it but it's such a i love the point you raised around you driving that relationship too mm. like you can't go to and, and i've made this mistake many a times where i go for a coffee and you know learn some incredible things but never follow up again or mm. never show them the value that they actually got from that chat and people love to know that they're adding value people know love to know that they're Literally. helping so your point around actually actioning those things and then sending an email back explaining what you've done mm. um, is really, really important and can just enhance that relationship even more because it shows you're serious. Yeah, but it, it, is, like, it is hard to get started and it yeah. is daunting sending is. that first message. So when I was in um, my second year of my second degree, I had the phone number of um, uh, this guy who was working at the Melbourne Football Club and um, I thought I should reach out to him. We should get coffee. Like I know networking is something you're meant to do. You're meant to get connections in sport. And I'd never done this before. And, um, and so I punched his phone number into my phone. And just as I was about to hit call, all these like, all this like self-doubt just like started filling my head like you know he's too busy he's got more important things to be doing he's going to say no so just just save yourself the rejection mm-hmm. and for the next 25 minutes I was walking around my backyard doing these <laughs> ones like trying to bring myself to press call and um and I eventually hit the call button uh Wayne picked up I was like hey Wayne do you want to grab coffee next week he's like yep sounds good see you in next week rock up we chatted for about 45 minutes. Mm. I reckon I contributed about two minutes to that conversation. He just kind of spilt all this wisdom on me. And then uh, once I got home, I got a text message from Wayne. He said, hey, Ruben, lovely to meet you today. Uh, do you want to grab a coffee at the same time next week? And I was like, I don't know what I've done to deserve this, but mm. yes, absolutely. Halfway through that coffee, um, he says, hey, Ruben, um, one of my other roles is at Paran Junior Football Club. We need an operations manager. Can you do it? And I was like, yeah, sure. Why not? And so then the next week, I'm organising the coaching accreditation for all the junior footballers. And um, I'm on the phone to the SMJFL and they're saying, uh, Ruben, we're just missing one level one coaching accreditation for your under 13 black coach, uh, Nathan Buckley. And I was like, I'm not going back to Bucks to say, where's your level one <laughs> cre- accreditation? Um, but without sending that first message, I, w- I would never have like realised how kind and generous people are and how many opportunities actually exist behind closed doors. Yeah, mate, it's a, it's a credit to yourself. It's, it's really, really cool to hear. And um, it's something that, you know, through even uh, my own personal journey, I've been lucky to, to find a lot of people like that as well. And looking at, you know, that old school mentality of going, I need a mentor, I need this. It's like, mm. you don't need mentors, you just need to build a team. Mm. Like people around that you go to for certain things. And um, for me, like uh, I speak about him a lot, but Ali, a guy, Ali Tarai, has been a really cool, unofficial sort of a friend and, and mentor for me and he gave me some really good advice um that you know because this sort of thing isn't just to get into a career it's to sustain a career and you, it's, mm. it's sort of like an evolution you got to continue literally to do yeah it. i speak to the, the guys all the time you're like go and find people that can teach you things and, and learn and you might not learn what to do you might learn like what not to do as yeah. well um, but he gave me a really good bit of advice and i think you know wherever you're sort of listening to this in your career um people out there listening it's like the higher um not the higher but the more sort of i suppose entrenched you are in your career the harder it can get to find people that are actually you know diminishing returns like Mm. the the more you go the higher harder is less people there are that are above what you're doing and he gave me this really good advice and a story um 
that people might have heard on on the pod that I did with him before, but it was about uh, one of his friends, Vin Jian, who is one of the biggest keynote speakers in the world. Like, mm. but he wasn't a long time ago. <laughs> and I'll butcher the story, but basically, Vin um, heard a guy doing a keynote, and he was like just so moved and he was like i need this person in my army like i need to find this person to talk to them and need to you know find them and for like two years he went on this journey of like emailing be like mate i'd love to catch you for a coffee i'd love to catch up would love to do this i'd love to pick your brain you know emailing messaging all these things eventually he got blocked oh no from the guy (laughs) then he sat back and he thought like what am i what am i doing here like this guy is one of the best in the world at what he does I'm asking him for his time to teach me. He's like, I'm actually adding no value to him. So, like, we talk about that range of being mutually beneficial. Mm. So, what he did was he went out and bought... He had, like, his savings. He bought, I think it was $20,000 worth of this guy's books. Oh, my God. (laughs) Took a photo of it, tweeted him saying, you know, X, love what you do. I've invested $20,000 worth of savings haven't told my wife into your books and in my keynote speaking from now on i will be giving these books out to my people in my show to then send them on to you straight away bang the guy got back to him and now they've been friends for like the last 10 years that is and now fantastic. Vin's like one of the best public speakers in the world that is amazing yeah i love so that it just shows the connection <laughs> of like what you can do to to mm. find people and then it goes even from ali who's now vin's really good mate ali mm. um used to go and watch vin to his keynotes. Yep. And Ali wanted to connect, but he knew how many people would be reaching out. So he actually nominated Vin for like five awards mm. and said, hey, Vin, just so you know, you don't know me. I love what you do. I'd love to connect. But FYI, I've actually nominated you for five awards, um, filled out all the paperwork <laughs> and entered all your details in. Would love to catch up for a coffee. And I was like, fuck, that's... So oh God. I think that if you're struggling <laughs> to find, like get creative yeah, and be you know think outside Mm. the box especially when you know someone that you might be trying to get into is a bit harder like Mm. there has to be other ways to sort of do it totally and i think like you know offering value to someone you know you can come and buy in books but also offering value to someone can just be giving them a platform to talk yeah so the early days of sports grad when it was just me and youtube and my 30 subscribers that youtube channel was like the greatest trojan horse ever to to speak with people Mm. it's like you know i'm a massive socceroos fan i interviewed the socceroos manager about you know how did you get your job and and um one of the uh the great opportunities that it provided me came at the the russia 2018 world cup because before that i'd found this guy called chris niku on on linkedin and he was a director on the board of football australia at the time and i shot him a message and just said hey do you want to come on the podcast and share about or the youtube channel and come and talk about your job as a director. And he said, oh, Ruben, I'd love to, but um, I'm about to head off to Russia. So, um, you know, maybe later in the year. I said to him, that's all right. I'm going to Russia too. <laughs> so I tried to find him in Moscow. Couldn't meet up. Tried to get to him in Kazan. Still no luck. Found him in Samara, which is like 4,000 kilometers out east in Siberia, somewhere random. And um, he says to me like, oh, Ruben, come and meet me at 12 p.m. at Skazkar restaurant where we're having a Socceroos family and friends function. And so I arrive and uh, I'm walking around the car park looking for this guy who hasn't updated his LinkedIn profile in about four years and eventually found him. We, uh, we sit outside, I set up the camera, we do the interview. Uh, interestingly, I was asking him about Australia's chances to host the, the FIFA Women's World Cup. And, um, and halfway through that, um, some guy walks across and interrupts the interview. And he says, oh, Chris, can I borrow you for a second? Uh, look up. I'm like, who's this guy? It was uh, Stephen Lowy, chairman at the time, but also part of the billionaire family who own Westfield Shopping Group worth $7 billion. I was like, all right, you can take Chris. Like, yeah. <laughs> And then um, after the interview was finished, he said, do you want to come inside and enjoy the function? So I walk in, all the board is there, past players are there, Tim Cahill's kids are running around. I'm like, this has just like completely changed my World Cup experience. And so four years later, when I go to Qatar with, with Scotty and uh, Australia um, qualify for the round of 16 again, Chris is now the chairman of the board. And because we've had this previous relationship from this shitty little YouTube channel with 30 subscribers, I sent him a message. We haven't talked for four years. And I said, hey, mate, do you want to do the interview again? So the next day I get in a taxi, go out to his hotel and we sit in the uh, the restaurant and I just ask him about what, what this means for football in Australia. And um, 
yeah, that uh, that opportunity wouldn't have come without a little Trojan horse of a channel. So, yeah, there's a lot of value you can offer in different ways. Yeah, it's a great point. It doesn't have to be monetary. It can be just experience, feedback, mm. and um, and value. And I think it's so it's interesting. I was like reflecting on the podcast as well. Like I've been so lucky to get incredible people on and learn it. But like if I just asked them to get a coffee for an hour and a half. It probably wouldn't. That's have a long worked. time. Yeah. Like, it's a long time, but you know, because you record it and it's got value for everyone. Yeah. Um, it's a good way. Now, it doesn't mean everyone needs to go out and start. A, well, you know what? You actually can. It's a really good way to do it. Um, yeah. To be honest, to to actually network with people because all this is is mm. learning how to communicate. That's talking, it. making connections. Well, that's the other thing. Like, teaches you how to speak. It does. Well, I used to be horrible well, at speaking. I still struggle, but uh, <laughs> yeah. you, ma- you can imagine how bad I was at the start. Um. <laughs> We providing value, obviously, there we spoke about. Do you want to talk about the um, career operating system, the, the yeah. five steps? Yeah, sure thing. So um, I guess the, the background to this career operating system is um, this is now the uh, basically the front page to my life. Yep. So every morning when I wake up, um, I open an app called Notion, which has got this operating system set up in a way that shows me what I'm working on today and how that fits into the bigger picture of of what I want to do with my life. And it's uh, it's very organized. There's a lot of systems behind it um, to make the front of it look very clean and easy. And it makes every single day very simple to to walk through. Like I'm not guessing when I wake up the next day. Love it. Now, I'm just going to interrupt because Mm. teach me, please. It's it's breaking it down and it'd be Mm. remiss of me if I pretend that I knew what Notion was. Sure. So can you even break it down into like, because people will be messaging saying, what is this app? Yeah. How does it work? Like, mm. what, what, how did, like, where do you use it? Is it like, because mm. I use Trello. Is it yeah, a similar yeah. operating system or is yeah. it? Yeah. So um, like you, you could create this in any type of platform. If you, you wanted want, to, you could yep. do it in Excel and okay. um, um, pen and paper. paper. Yeah, literally. Yeah. Um, but Notion's just a very flexible tool that kind of combines Trello with Word Docs, with Excel, with mm. you know all these different things that like um, allow you to set up a page in in some pretty crafty ways. Cool. So that's just a platform that I decide to use it in. Um, to get to this point was a, a three year journey, <laughs> yeah. because for the first twenty six years of my life, I was shit house at setting goals and, and sticking to it. Like Jan one every single year. What am I going to do this year? Then a week later, I've, gym I've, membership. Yeah diet yeah yeah i'm gonna run no fall over yeah (laughs) so um so i I realized that the issue that i had was i was terrible at reviewing and um have you read uh, atomic habits by james clear i i have it on my kindle you should read it. I haven't read it, but I've, I've got it there. It's yeah. a great book. But what well, I'm, actually, now that you said about the t- the four hour work week, mm. that ticked me that I really want to read that first. That is that is excellent read. Yeah. Um, but one of the principles in Atomic Habits is uh, if, if you want to make sticking to a habit easy, make it attractive. Mm. So the hardest thing for me with my goal setting was actually reviewing the goals. So my way of making the review attractive is um, I would set aside two hundred dollars to book an Airbnb for a night. And I'd go out to the Airbnb by myself and complete this like set agenda of how I wanted to review my month. So I got to see um, a lot of great parts of Victoria that I've never seen before. One out? Yeah, yeah. So I had all this time to myself just to kind of like sit and reflect and review the previous month. It's really cool. And um, and so I, I would go out, review my goals, give my goals a score. There's a whole scoring system to like, you know, setting habits and, and goals I kind of created for myself just to kind of track how I'm going with it. But um, in doing that, it gave me a chance to, to tinker with it every single month. And so it wasn't until I got to two years into doing it every single month, so 24 cons- consistent consecutive reviews, that I finally landed on a way that I... I uh, want to structure my life and, you know, six habits that I want to do every day um, and a set of types of goals that I want to do. Because I'd gone through all these different, you know, you can set a goal for anything, but some are going to be more impactful than others. And there's so many like little habits you can create too, but mm. some are going to be more impactful than others. Um, and so it took me 24 months of being like, that works, that doesn't work to kind of soften it down to like, this is what works for me. And um, once I nailed that, the, at the start of this year, I had five consecutive months of uh, of a perfect score. So, for example, like um, if I do a habit more than 20 days in a month, I'll give myself three out of three. Between 19 and 10, I'll give myself one. Less than 10, zero points. And so, maximum score of 18. And so, once I kind of had done all this discovery work for mm. two years, 
I had five consecutive months of 18 out of 18. Jesus. And, um, and uh, but like it takes a freaking long time to like get the grunt work done before, yeah. Yeah, before you realize what works for you and it becomes easy. And so now the challenge for me is just staying consistent. So for example, there, there are some habits that I think I've clocked, but I've realized they're actually so important for the way I operate. For example, one of my habits is um, planning out my day in advance. And I thought that I've clocked this, you know, I do it regularly enough, I don't need to keep tracking it. As soon as I took tracking it away, I started missing one, that would then affect when I did something that day and that would just like, you know, ruin my whole day. And I'm like, all right, you know, this isn't a game I'm trying to win. It's just like, just do it every day. It's just yeah. a part of living now. There's no secret really. No. So just on the the goals, like is there, how did you come up with them? And is it like accessible for anyone to sort of do this relevant to themselves? Mm, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, I've actually, I've mapped out the whole system um, in a blog. If you search Sports Grad Pro Career yep. Operating System, you'll be able we'll, to find it there. We'll have this in the show notes, guys, mm. as well. But I've got a five-step process here. Mm. Um, who am I and what do I want? Yep. So creating a personal trademark, what you want to be, do and have, mm. which, um, you know, takes, it sounds easy, but when you actually <laughs> think about it, it's it's really hard. Uh, number two is vision in 10 years from now what do i want my life to look like goals career goals people skills projects and brand four is habits based on your goals what habits will take you to your vision and number five is track and review um number five is easily the most important right yeah absolutely (laughs) the amount of times even you know back when i was playing footy i used to do stuff like this Mm. and just put it up in the bottom of the fucking my bag or my locker and just never get looked at again (laughs) Mm. because it's really interesting isn't it like when you do um sort of a bit of a calibrate of your life Mm. um what you think you want versus what you actually want change over once you get it down on paper yeah big time and i notice that every single time i do it like something changes so for example like the, the first half of it who am i and what do i want um that looks like a, a mind map so yep. i write my name in the middle ruben and it'll go out to four characteristics that describe me and then around that i'll draw the things that i want in my life and so that becomes a yep. little sheet that i can stick on the wall every six months or so i'll recreate that mind map and yep. every time you know the mind maps slightly change sometimes they're like you know novel things that i first wanted that have dropped off other times you know more important things start to surface as you get a little bit older so mm. it's it's interesting kind of watching yourself change as you do it yeah, no, I love it. Speaking of some some lighter stuff now and some actionable items for people, obviously that being one that they'll need to go away and do a lot of sort of looking into. And I don't want this to be one of the things people listen to. Like genuinely, if you're serious about this, go away mm. and, and have a look at that. Mm. And we'll have it in the show, um, the link in the show notes for sure. I would also recommend listening to your interview with Nick Crocker yes. from uh, Blackbird. Because when I listened to that, I was like, this is amazing. He's doing some very similar stuff. Yeah. And so I now live, I, I really listen to that episode quite often because it's just great inspiration for me to yeah. do my system. I love it. Yeah. He's he's an incredible guy. And there's so many systems. You've got to work out which one works mm. for you. There's no right or wrong for, for everything. Um, I love to sort of in this series, and I think really relevant today, and it's probably more than a lot of them, we can actually walk away with a lot of things that people can do to sort of little one percenters that can technically get you a long way in, in a career that you want to go to. Mm. Um, one that I was thinking as like a business uh, owner that w- when I get emails are just little things that sort of show that someone's really cares about what they're doing mm. um, is an email handle. Yes. <laughs> so I think that it's so easy to to do and it's a little one percenter that makes you stand out from a lot of people because you'd be surprised how many emails and this is a quite a, it's a shallow thing but it also speaks mm. a lot like unfortunately and fortunately sometimes perception is reality mm. and if someone's emailing you with like johnny harrison 69 at hotmail.com <laughs> versus like jonathan harrison at hotmail.com yep i think there's like a big difference in how that sort of presents in the big networking time. and professionalism opportunity big time um as well as even having like your footer and a uh, you know a correct sort of signature um with your details email follow-up name uh email linkedin all those things connected mm. is just a one percenter that 99.9 percent of people don't get right yeah which is super easy absolutely well like, the easiest way to stand out is do things that people aren't prepared to do yeah um linkedin we spoke about earlier just sort of like getting that updated with study making sure like that um, the businesses or experience, work experiences that you've done are actually tagged correctly mm. and like the logos are available. Yeah. Um, I think that's another really big one. Like it's a lot of time when I'm looking at potential people to come and work with and stuff. Again, I'm 
not great at this myself, <laughs> but I've had a lot of support putting my stuff together. Yep. Um, I try and make it look somewhat presentable, mm. and I think it's a really it speaks volumes. Yeah, so that's a, that's a great one. Another bit of low hanging fruit for LinkedIn is just add featured media, which is like posts that you've created that you want to pin to the top of your profile that people yep. look at over and over again. Yeah. So, for example, like if you were coming out of university and you wanted to prepare your profile in a compelling way, you might just plan to post only three posts. Maybe post one about, you know, why you decided to get into this particular stream of study and what your ambitions for the future are. Pin that to the top so that when someone arrives, they know exactly who you are. Otherwise, that gets washed away within a week. Yeah. Um, after that, put up a post about some rec- recent work experience that you've done um, and maybe an event that you've been to too. And if you just have those three posts pinned to the top of your profile, one, you looked like an elite LinkedIn user because like most people just miss the fact that this feature exists. And two... It just helps people remember the best parts about who you are. So you're kind of optimizing that. Sure. Another one that um, I've found that's, again, sort of going back to what I was talking before about the not adding value, but also showing bits and pieces that it, it really speaks volumes. Um, and I, to be quite honest, I don't think I've ever really, one person's done this to me and I've, I remember just going, fucking hell, what an email that is. Like, that's mm. awesome. Uh, he emailed me and... He was like, um, mate, love the business, really appreciate what you're doing, would love to give some feedback. Um, was checking out your website and noticed that X, Y, and Z wasn't working. Um, I think that like, you know, you just need to clean up a little bit of your stuff, need to do this, this, and this. And I was like, wow, like this person's like really onto this. Yeah. Like had taken the time to sort of do research, you know, even though it might not have been that hard, but was sort of looking for things that we could potentially improve on. Mm. If you'd like to chat more and how about I can fix this up, let me know. Mm. And we worked with that person and got it done and it was there. Amazing. Yeah. And it's funny because like the principle of that exists at every single level. Like a lot of people think that, oh, you got to be, you know, 10 years into your career and a consultant to like get that type yeah. of work. But if you're looking for your first internship, same principles ap- apply. Like if you were working in journalism or something, you wanted to get a content creator role at say sports creator at the moment and you're flicking through our channels and you might have seen like, oh, you know, that TikTok um, content has dropped off recently. And you had a chat with me and asked like, oh, you know, what's going on with your TikTok at the moment? Oh, well, we had a bit of turnover. So, you know, we just haven't filled that yet. Like, well, what if I did that for you? Yeah. Like problem solved, there's an opportunity for you straight away. Yeah. So it exists the whole way up. The problem solving is, is such a big one because I know... Uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of people are like this, but when you know, we can probably relate. You you spend your mind like just trying to fix problems, but actually having people that are willing to provide solutions is like such mm. a big help. And it's like almost going, how can I help? This mm. helping isn't like saying yes and doing roles. It's actually coming up with solutions. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I think the the solution giving or even just giving advice like they might mm. not even be somewhat relevant but it just shows so much Big care time. of what you want to do yeah the uh i've never forgotten this since someone first told me but um a great analogy for for that is um like imagine you and darcy are walking down the street one day and someone from the other side of the road shoots darcy and you're standing over darcy and you're like oh my god like darcy's dying here like i need a doctor someone please you know help me solve this um fix this bullet wound and uh, I come over and I go, hey, you know, can I help? And you, you look at me and you go, like, are you a doctor? Like, can you help? I'm like, no, but I've got a sport management degree and I'm a really nice guy. You know, I'm always on time. I never forget my mother's birthday. And you're like, that's great. I don't care. My friend's dying here. Like, are you a doctor or not? <laughs> and um, like that situation happens every single day. And the people who are confused about how to find a job or an opportunity are the people who think they can help. And society is the rest of the world bleeding. The point of that is that you'll always get an opportunity if you can solve a problem yeah because people need their problem solved every every person every organization has needs that need to be filled and if you float around the edges of that you're going to miss the mark but if you absolutely nail it then you'll get an opportunity no matter what you're doing love that that's a great analogy um darcy i hope you don't get shot though man <laughs> you know I, you know i appreciate you sorry to use you darcy yeah, <laughs> yeah i think it's gonna it's one of those ones that like scares you to remember that yeah um, sort of thing. i was in india recently i told that to them the whole room went oh my god oh my god yeah 100 <laughs> percent. um any other sort of tips and tricks for people that you found most successful in, in giving advice to, to younger people that can just get you that one percent An- another one for linkedin in terms of how to use that really well so linkedin's a great way to to meet people but the easiest way to meet people through linkedin is to you know reach out to the people who want to have a conversation the people who want to have a conversation are the people who are posting online Mm -hmm. so if someone puts up a post you're like 
genuinely read it, comment your thoughts on it. And then if you want to, send them a message afterwards just saying, hey, really liked your post about such and such. Um, great work. You know, love to hear more about it. Such a great point. Like you post, <laughs> when you post on Instagram, it's not like you're going, fuck, I hope no one comments on this. Yeah, yeah. Like you actually <laughs> literally want people to comment on literally. your post. And so like, say, um, so th- th- this, is, this is a real example with um, a guy who uh, shared a proposal about a potential podcast for the AFL. And um, this is right around the time when... Um, we were starting our podcast and um, he shared this PDF document about this show for the AFL and um, and I sent him a message saying like, hey, thanks for sharing that because like you never see this sort of content online freely accessible like, you know, the, the business plan for a proposed podcast. Mm. And he just said, thanks very much. Um, love what you guys are doing. And that opened the door for a conversation. So I could go back to him and say, hey, by the way, we're about four episodes in. Any chance, you know, you'd be willing to have a chat with us to see, you know, where we might be able to do some, um, make some improvements. And he said, yeah, absolutely. No worries at all. So I think if you can just show appreciation for people who are out there trying to provide value to the world, then they'll happily have a conversation with you. Love it, man. That's super exciting. Super mm. cool. I think there's so many takeaways mm. um, in this to just get that 1%, not only early in your career but then um later on too if you're already in the field that you want mm. and you want to progress in certain sort of fields um is is really cool yeah well i think i think one one other principle on networking to understand is that um relationships compound just in the same way money compounds mm. and so if you start a relationship five years ago five years later it's going to be so much easier to work with that person like you know I met my mate Anthony, you know, over 10 years ago when we started, it was, you know, getting to know each other. Now, when he says, hey, Ruben, do you want to move in with me? It's like a quick shake of the hands. What's the price? All right, yep, cool. I trust you. You trust me. Like, we're, we're straight into it. Yeah. And so things just become easier with people the longer you, you spend with them. And so even if you are early in your career and you think like, oh, I've just met this person in class, you know, no, not really any help to me now. Yeah. You never know where that person's going to end yeah. up. So. For, for example, in one of my internships, um, I was w- working with Australian University Sport. I don't know why, but they sent me to a conference in France and I was the Australian delegate over there. I met the UK delegate whose name was Kiri. And um, we had a great week at the conference. A couple of years later, she comes to Australia. We catch up. A couple of years later, I go to the UK. We catch up there. Seven years down the track, I'm in London um, this October, just gone. And uh, she says, hey, Ruben, do you want to stay at our apartment in, in London? Uh, and by the way, um, my partner, Maria, she now, is, she now works for Nike. She does a whole lot of uh, hospitality hosting at Wembley. The Socceroos are playing England at Wembley. Do you want to come and sit in a corporate box for the match? And oh, by the way, um, Sam Kerr is also joining us in the box too. And I was like, uh, yes, I want to come to that. <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> so like at the time, back in 2017, I could have easily just thought, you know, after this conference is gone, I'll never see any of these people again. But that uh, that moment kind of felt like um, you know seven years of this relationship kind of cultivating. So that was kind of a, a nice thing. I love that. Go. I love that point, and it's 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 happened to me so many times in life. And it's it's I think it's to the point that we said right at the beginning around that proactivist proactiveness versus reactiveness like you're not proactively going hey this could pay me back in seven years mm. but I think just by investing in people being interested um, versus trying to be interesting mm. is, is such a good sort of point like my business partner now that I've, I've you know do this with like he was my uh, footy coach in when I was in year seven mm. and like we've sort of stayed connected since then always sort of been uh, mutually sort of connected he went and worked the AFLPA was sort of helping me mentor and transition outside of footy and then worked together and, and then, you know, look from year seven to, to now, what, almost sort of 10 to 12 years, well, even longer, way longer. Mm. Literally 20 years later, we started a business together. Um, Amazing. And so many points of that from school, footy, um, even for me, like a really big thing that I had no idea with, but just getting around the office and the administration side of football clubs, mm. um, whether you're playing local whether you're playing VFL or AFL, people, you forget that the people working at those clubs are just trying to grow and learn and scale their career just as mm. much as you are in a different field. Yes. And it's so funny, like when I was 18, I was sort of mates with all the guys that were sort of 18, 19, 20 upstairs. And I look back now, and those guys are all the heads of department at Carlton and the Giants. Yeah. I'm like, fucking hell, <laughs> I, I'm like, this is fantastic. Like, yeah. you know, just from knowing people from that long ago, like now everyone's sort of, 
gone on to do incredible things. You look in the football world, some guys are doing things at Geelong mm. or in other industries. You're like, fuck, that just didn't even see that coming. Yeah. Oh, footy clubs are amazing networks. And like, not just the AFL clubs, but all the way down the old boys clubs, any grassroots clubs. Expect, yeah, 100%. Yeah. So like some people come to me and say like, oh, I have to give up playing sport to focus on my career. I'm like, keep playing sport because it's probably better for your career. <laughs> Literally. And you, I think you can have those organic conversations where it's not as sort of trend, like it's not as... um asking for something when it's to do with this football club mm. and, or, or soccer club cricket club whatever it is yep uh is really important um that's for sure mate i think we need to do a part two because <laughs> there's so many uh valuable lessons there uh there's so much stuff that we'll, we'll make sure that we put into some posts on instagram collaborate with with you guys over there at sports grad and make sure we put your um five steps um of your career operating system in the links in the show notes i think a lot of people will will really add value from that i think takeaways I'm very interested in yours, mm. interested in yours, sorry, but mine would be, um, I think those little things that you were talking about around like LinkedIn and even the part about, I sort of spoke about with the email handle, like just how easy it is to get those one percenters right, whether it be doing your research prior to reaching it to someone, knowing actually about their story, who they are, what they've done, making sure your email looks clean, it's got the... Um, signature down the bottom your LinkedIn's updated you're using all the right features like that is stuff that's it's super shallow but it is mm. a first impression of who you are if you haven't met someone yes yeah absolutely I think LinkedIn is a, a massive catalyst for your career mm. um, two adding value to, to people um, and this goes both ways I think like just sending that message make that call reach out to whoever it is but also working like how can um, maybe the further you get down the line how can you actually add value to people to um, not only help yourself but help them as well because then mm. those relationships can last for a long time and, mm. and help you out in different aspects. Um, I did have one actually was I'm really bullish on this just because I, you know, I'm in a startup a lot like yourself. I always said to people like volunteer, like intern or, or try and work in startups over big corporations. Yes. I just think that you get so much closer to in a corporate, a big corporation that's fantastic working in a big chain but mm. you might not get the access to things that necessarily people do when you work in a small business because no. we have 10 people here and like everyone works through everything whereas like when you're at maybe cricket australia or the afl or wherever it is like you, you are you're not a cog in the chain but you are maybe just not as exposed to other areas mm. yeah big time you you are confined to a very specific task yeah. and roles inside a large organization because to become a large organization you need systems yeah um so to be honest like the the opportunity or the w bit of work experience that got me my job at Cricket Australia was my volunteer role as president of the Deakin University Sports Society. And Cricket Australia didn't know this, but the year before, there was only me and one other guy left who could be president. Like we're a committee of two people. One of us has got to be president. <laughs> and Don't tell them that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, my mate Paul was like, oh, I've got a few other things on. So I was like, all right, I guess I'm president. But I kind of looked at it and was like, well, there's Deacon in the title and I've got the title president. So this can be like whatever I want it to be. And for the three years prior to that, the club had been dropping in membership from 180 to 150 to 125. And I said to the newly rec recruited uh, committee, like, we can get this back up to 200. And, um, and so that year, like, we took a photographer to advance. We started marketing the shit out of it and grew the membership back up to 213 and that was an increase of 71%. And so when Cricket Australia get me in an interview and they asked me like, Ruben, what are you most proud about in your career so mm. far? I said, I'm most proud about helping a society dedicated to helping the careers of my peers and being able to grow that by 71% in one year. And no one told me to do that. No one kind of said, here are the rules, here are the tasks, here's how you're gonna spend your hours and weeks working on it. That was something that I had full and open reign on and ended up being the most impactful opportunity that got me my first full-time job in sport. Awesome. And not only is that, like, you know, the way I think about that too is um, it's one of those things like to be a leader and to be like a, a senior coach, you need to have coached your own team at some level. Mm -hmm. And like you look at that there, you know, if you're working for, obviously you, you graduated with Cricket Australia, but you're working on something where it might be a smaller team, might be a volunteer role, but mm. you're actually controlling the whole thing. Yeah. And you're getting to like make some decisions that might, you might, you, you'll have to sort of work towards later in that sort of next field. Mm, that's right. Because like the fundamental the fundamentals are all the same. It's yeah. just different scale. No, that's so cool. Um, and building your army. That was my last point. Uh, building out that list of, of people. There might be 
even you know you might already know people in your community that are family friends you mm. know your, your mum or dad's mates of family friends that are in certain fields and they're just got their head switched on you go, can we grab a coffee can i ask you something over dinner um things like that that they can introduce you to the next person and mm. you'd be surprised how many people keep passing you around and, and learning that sort of stuff too so there's my takeaways anything else i missed um i think just like with the point around adding value i think just remember that this and this might sound harsh but nobody cares what you can do the world cares about what you can do for them yeah and that's kind of extreme but kind of true so going back to the um scenario where darcy's on the floor bleeding like people need certain things Mm. and if you can understand what people need and how you can serve that then you go a long way 100 percent. so question then when you had that job at cricket australia Mm. what did you identify they needed or was that more of a role at the time that you were just Mm. trying to sort of advance yeah so that that role was um digital commercial specialist so i was doing a lot of executing on the digital campaigns that came through cricket and um and and this is a another door into a whole lot of other things but i think um one of the interesting things about going for a job at an entry level is that yes people need their problem solved but people are also trying to hire people with potential to be guns in the future it's exactly the same as the way afl clubs recruit at the draft yeah. You're trying to figure out who's got the potential to be the next best player in the league so you know when you're coming out of uni, you're not getting judged on, you know, how high you can jump and, you know, mm-hmm. how fast you can run and all that, all that st- sort of stuff. But an organization wants you to stick around for, for five or six years and in that time develop compounding knowledge about how the business works, compounding relationships internally and externally so you can get things done and, um, you know, be a self-starter so you can, you know, drive the business forward. And so when you're coming out of university, if you can... D- demonstrate that you have the greatest potential to fill that position in the future and doing things like showing how you have got leadership potential, showing how you've got initiative and you're a self-starter, how you've got emotional intelligence, can work with other people, yeah, how you're a creative thinker who can be innovative. And then if you can add results to that, so, you know, this is your, your stats, you know, what are your goals and marks per game? Or, you know, how much did you increase revenue by each week? Um, then people look at that and think, this person could be a gun in the future and we can work with that. We can, you know, help this guy grow into mm. a role because we might not need a key forward now, but we could develop him into a key back. Same thing applies in, in the business world. And so, you know, I know we just talked about filling a need. I'm not sh- you know, I, I could do the job when I got to cricket, but yeah. I kind of feel like they looked at me and the set of experiences I've done and thought, you know, this guy deserves an opportunity because who knows what we could get him doing next well it's, it's, it's honestly as you said it's, a, it's an incredible point i love that because that's an entry-level position as you said around mm. it's nearly like person and uh drive and goals versus actually skill based whereas mm. once you progress into that world and you do learn certain skills it's then going i can feel this need for someone else yeah um once you sort of move probably in different mm. aspects but Mate, I'm feeling pumped. You know, if I didn't have a, you know, my own business, I'd be going out there and applying for a few tonight. Um, but I think I've got plenty of work to do here. Fair enough. And uh, plenty of roles to, you know, plenty of things that if anyone is out there and they could identify, yep. um, there's stuff to do. Ruben, thanks so much for your time, man. My really pleasure. appreciate it. Um, guys and girls and anyone else who's listening, please make sure you go out and check out Sports Grad. We'll have all the links in the show notes. Um, and yeah, we'll follow you along, man, with the pod. And um, yeah, really blessed to, to get you on today, adding so much value to our community. I know a lot of people are going to get a lot out of that. So thank you very much. Awesome. And thank you for the work you're doing. You're doing great.